Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. In this short video, I'm going to talk about an important mineral that we need as a daily requirement in our diet, and that is potassium. Now, the important minerals that we need on a daily basis are potassium, sodium, magnesium, calcium, chloride, and we need 4,700 milligrams of potassium per day. Now, one of the functions of potassium is for cellular energy. Also, too, one of the functions of potassium, it helps stabilize blood sugar. It stabilizes blood sugar because we need potassium to store glucose as glycogen in the liver and muscle tissue. Now let's back up. What is glycogen? Well, when we take in carbohydrates and they get broken down to the simplest form, and that's called glucose, okay, the glucose gets stored in the liver and muscle tissue in the form of glycogen. So that's collectively a whole bunch of glucose put together, and that's called glycogen. So in between meals, when we need short bursts of energy, our bodies actually dip into the liver and muscle tissue, pulls the glycogen, gets converted to glucose, and then this is where we get energy in between meals. So we need potassium in order for our bodies to do that. Now, how many, do, how many potassiums are needed to do so? It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every one glucose molecule, we need one potassium ion to help store it. So what happens when you have a decrease of potassium, okay, and you take in too much glucose, where does that glucose go? The glucose gets converted into triglycerides, into fat. And this is how you get fat. This is one reason why you get fat if you're not, if you're not taking enough potassium. So how do we get depleted in potassium? Well, junk food. Junk food is loaded in sodium. Now with cellular energy, how, that's, how that functions is that we only need about 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day, but we need over three times the amount of potassium. Now what happens is that when you talk about muscle physiology and nervous system function, we have what's called the sodium potassium pump. Sodium comes into the cell which pumps potassium out. So when you're taking in too much junk food, you're shunting in too much sodium into the cell and you're putting out too much potassium. And this is where you get potassium depletion. Also too, adrenal stress. Adrenal stress, we have the adrenal glands which are, which are nickel, quarter shaped glands that sit right on top of the kidneys. And in times of stress, the fight or flight or freeze response, cortisol gets released. Now, don't forget, cortisol is a sugar. So what happens is that you do have an insulin release to help stabilize the sugar, the, again, the cortisol that's flowing around the system. And too much cortisol in the system is going to deplete potassium. Also, too, insulin resistance. Okay, so with insulin resistance, it blocks the ability to store potassium. So when you have too much insulin flowing around your system, you're going to get, you're going to get depleted potassium, okay? But also, too, sugar. If you have too much sugar, this is where you retain water. So when you're having a high-carbohydrate diet, diet and you're insulin resistant, you, this is where you're going to get depleted potassium. And this is where you start to run in trouble, especially with diabetics or pre-diabetics. Now, how do you replenish the potassium? Well, you can either take in the supplementation potassium supplements, but one thing I always recommend to my patients is you always want to start off with foods because the average soda, potassium supplement only contains 99 milligrams of potassium that can actually be absorbed. Now remember, you need 4,700 milligrams, so you need to take about 47 pills a day if, if you're trying to make it up with, with supplements. So the foods, I always recommend avocados. Avocados are loaded in potassium. Just one whole avocado, you're getting over a thousand milligrams of potassium. One acorn squash, you're getting one cup of it, you're getting 896 milligrams of potassium. Spinach, one cup of spinach, 839 milligrams of potassium. Sweet potatoes, which are very good, one large sweet potato contains 855 milligrams of potassium. Wild caught salmon, a half filet, 722 milligrams. Dried apricots, a half a cup of dried apricots will give you about 756 milligrams of potassium. Now, one caveat about dried apricots that you want to look out for, it is high in sugar. So with, again, with too much insulin flowing around the system, it's actually going to block the absorption of potassium. So just be, just be careful for that. Pomegranates, one whole, you're getting 670, 667 milligrams of potassium, which is a lot. Coconut water. Coconut water, this is what I do if I'm out and about and I need that potassium because I'm just feeling energy depleted. I'll stop off, grab some coconut water. Again, one cup is 600 milligrams. The coconut water usually comes in about two and a half cups in the container. 
and you're good. White beans, white beans, delicious. Half a cup will give you 502 milligrams of potassium. And also too, one banana, one large banana, 487 milligrams of potassium. Now, again, with the dried apricots, with the bananas too, you wanna to look out for that because it is sugar. Okay, it's a high in sugar content. So I always recommend to my patients, yes, a banana is good. However, go for the avocados, go for the beans, go for the coconut water, go for the pomegranate. Okay, so you wanna watch out that sugar content. So again, the benefits of potassium, very, very beneficial for the body. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my, to my YouTube channel. I'm getting a lot of subscribers. I appreciate you guys watching. Share with a friend and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Hello, this is Dr. Juad. Please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date videos. And thanks for watching.